Now that we have uh, an equation for the net rate of production of chains, active chains, that have the active site associated with monomer 1 and monomer 2, we're going to make what's called a steady state assumption. So this is actually an important assumption. What we're saying is that basically the net amount or concentration of these active chains, active chains that end in monomer 1 and active chains in monomer 2, is relatively constant. Uh, so in other words, we can rewrite that as the rate of change with respect to time of the concentration of these two species is equal to zero. So basically the total amount of chains that have active sites of monomer 1 and monomer 2 remains constant. And this is essentially um, you know, a reasonable assumption throughout the majority of the polymerization process. When we do that, then we can set these two rate equations equal and combine terms. So we have uh, like terms combined here. We can factor out this common uh, multiplier of two, and we can then get an expression for the ratio of chains, active chains that end in monomer one to active chains that end in monomer two. And we see that that's equal to the concentration of monomer one uh, relative to monomer two times the ratio of these rate constants. Ultimately, we want to develop an expression for the amount of monomer 1 and the amount of monomer 2 that are present in the copolymer. And a more convenient way to do that is to define this parameter capital F, which is the mole fraction of a particular monomer that's added to the growing chain per unit time. So in other words, F1 represents the mole fraction of monomer 1 that's added per unit time and F2 represents the mole fraction of monomer 2 that's added per unit time. And since these are fractional quantities, or fraction of the total, they both have to add up to 100%, or their fractions have to add up to 1. Now, we have expressions for these rates of change uh, that we can use to obtain a relationship for this parameter, for example, F1. So F1 is the rate at which monomer 1 is added to the growing chain. So we can write that in terms of the rates of change of monomers 1 and 2 in the reaction mixture. Uh, so that's what's shown here. And notice that M1 and M2, these represent concentrations of monomer 1 and 2 in the reaction mixture, whereas F1 and F2 refer to concentrations or fractions of these monomers in the copolymer. So the rate of change of M1 in the copolymer is going to be minus the rate of change of M1 in the reaction mixture. So that's why I have these minus signs present here. So the rate of change or the rate of addition of monomer 1 per unit time uh, into the uh, copolymer is equal to uh, minus the rate of change of monomer 1 in the reaction mix over the, rate of the sum of the rate of change of monomer 1 and monomer 2 in the reaction mix. Okay, I can get rid of these minus signs. They're present in every term in the equation. Uh, so I'll do that here. And I can do in the same way, come up with an expression for the mole fraction of monomer 2 in the copolymer uh, by taking the rate of change of monomer 2 divided by the total rate of change of monomers associated with monomers 1 and 2. Now, Given these two expressions, I'm going to take a ratio, F1 to F2, or the fraction of monomers of, of M, fraction of M1 monomers added divided by the fraction of M2 monomers added to the copolymer. So I take a ratio of these two expressions. Notice that they have the same denominator, so I can cancel those out. And so I get the following relationship for the ratio of the mole fraction of addition of M1 and M2 is just equal to the rate of change or the ratio of the rate of change of those monomers in the reaction mix. That's a pretty intuitive result. Now, remember that we have these four processes associated with propagation. So now I want to write equations for the rate of change of monomer M1 and M2. Now, remember before we wrote rates of change for uh, M1 dot and M2 dot, which are the active chains that have this radical species uh, at the end so they're able to continue growing, the living chains. Here, I'm writing expressions for monomer 1 and monomer 2 that are present uh, in the reaction mix. But we can do that in the same way. Uh, monomer M1, for example, 
is being consumed by this reaction when monomer one is added to a growing chain with monomer one at the end. Uh, and it's also being consumed by this cross reaction where monomer one is added to a growing chain that has monomer two at the end. So these two terms, K11 and K21, are associated with consumption of monomer one. And similarly, monomer two is consumed when it's added to a growing chain that either has monomer one at the end or monomer two at the end. That's what's represented by this equation. So now we can use these relationships. We can substitute those indirectly into this uh, ratio of the fractions of monomer one and two in the copolymer as shown here. The next step is to do some mathematical simplification. So first I'm gonna divide the numerator and denominator by the concentration of uh, active chains that have monomer two at the end. So when I do that and carry through these terms, this M2 dot term cancels out uh, for these uh, two terms. Uh, and then I have a ratio of M1 dot to M2 dot uh, in these terms. 